Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial we will going to be learning about inheritance in Java. This class has already been developed and we have developed it in our earlier tutorials. We have a class called employee with an ID, name, salary. It has a constructor that takes three parameters, assigns them to the respective properties. It has a default constructor that pretty much calls the other constructor by using the this functionality which we have covered in our earlier tutorials so it has overloaded constructors it has a getter and a setter for each one of its properties as you can see through that's all this class has now what we're going to be doing is we will going to be creating a subclass or a child class or a derived class all three of these names are used for a class that inherits from another class well, why do we need to inherit? The idea is that you cannot put everything in one class, so you have to divide up the task. Very similar to a hierarchy at a workplace. The manager can be doing everything, nor can the clerk do everything, nor could a personnel do everything, nor could a programmer do everything, nor could a project manager could do everything. So you got to divide up the work. When you end up dividing the work, you do not want to be dividing it to such an extent where you are repeating yourself. So you want to have a generalization way up, which is called the parent. And then each child works on a very specific details from the parent. So for example, if we have a work setup where we have part-time employees and full-time employees, so anything in common between the two kinds of employees, we put it in a class called employee. Then from that employee class, we create two children classes called part-time employee and full-time employee. And each one of them only hold those properties which they do not have in common. Anything that is common is only put in employee class, just so that we do not have to repeat ourselves in each of those individual classes called full-time and part-time employees. And then they can both become the child of employee and they can inherit everything out of employee that is not private. Private entities are to be kept only by the class itself. Only the public and protected entities can go to the next generation and generations after that. Public is available to everybody. Protected is only available to the descendants. So the children classes could inherit from the parent classes, but the vice versa is not possible. So here we have got an employee class. We would now be interested in creating a child class to this class employee. So I'll right click on source, new class. The name of the class that I would like to create now is part time employee. No public static void main. However, instead of the super class being object, I would like the super class to be employee. Super class is the parent class. When you do not mention the name of the super class, all classes automatically become children to the object class. That's how they get access to so many built-in functionalities. So now I'm going to be clicking finish here. The moment I click finish here, you will notice the Java automatically adds the word extents and also adds the word employee right past the extents. So the word extends is used in Java for inheritance. The name of the class before the word extends is the name of the child class, and after the word extend is the name of the parent class. We will now going to write a property for this part-time employee. Let's say I would like to have a private property called hourly salary. Now I would like to create a constructor for this class. So we're going to be using the built-in features constructor using fields default one with something of this nature and now notice here is a super call which we're going to be exploring in our next set of tutorials so I'm going to just leave it as it is I'm going to just get rid of it for now I'll explore this later on what exactly does it mean by the word super and then I'm going to have another constructor here generate constructor using fields and I will going to once again notice there are three properties that are coming through the first is a call to a super and then there's the statement so I'm going to reduce the number of parameters down to only one I'm gonna get rid of this call to super 
and we will going to only leave it down to one statement and in the future tutorials we will going to be exploring what is the purpose of super now I want this guy to call this guy so I want to be calling with the help of this passing a value over which will gonna be considered as the minimum wage the default for the wage so here we have one constructor calling the other now I would like to set my getters and setters for the hourly and here we have got our getters and setters I can remove all these comments so here we have got a class called part-time employee which extends from the employee class it has its own constructor overloaded constructor a getter and a setter for its property very similar to the classes that you have done in the past but here is the difference let's create a class called demo part-time class demo part-time employee this is the class where I would like to use public static void main just so that you could actually get to see how this is going to be used so let me press finish here and now we will going to instantiate an object of employee class employee object equals to new employee and I would like you to look at the list of the getters and setters available to it so when I put getters it is accessing accessing ID name salary when I put setter it can access ID name salary all of these belong to employee class and you can very easily see at the end of each of the statements now let me create an object of part-time employee type part-time employee and notice here as soon as I use the word get notice it not only has access to its public member getter but also can access the getters from the parent similarly when I use set you will be able to see how it could access its own setter which is, and and can also access the setter from the parent so that's the beauty of doing an inheritance that a class always can expand on so the uh, class that you are creating um, as a child class is always larger in size from the parent because it inherits from the parents and then built on top of that so here we have got two objects let's first try to use this class the way it is right now set ID set name set salary now the salary is irrelevant for this employee because he's a part-time employee so we will going to learn how to fix that in the next set of issues so we will going to for now skip that center for this guy as we create another child class called full-time employee in our next set of tutorials I'll show you how you can move a property away from a parent and completely move it into a one particular child so for this guy we're not going to be using this property rather what we want to be using here is set hourly salary now we're going to be calling the respective getters to display the information and you can see that the getters are being called as if it owns them because anything that is public in the parent is accessible to the child and here you can see 
that this is the information I would like to display. As I now run my program, you will be able to see the output right here that how a child object can access two properties from parent and one property of its own very seamlessly. You can't really tell the difference when you have coded it as if it really owns the property or if it is owning through inheritance. Well, in the next set of tutorials, we will going to explore this program even more. Hope to catch you in the next tutorial. Till then, have a good day.